Today I'm going to be teaching about how to do product photography and flat lays, um, how I like to do them, and it is not a technical science, and I'm going to show you why. It doesn't need to be a big production, we can do it with natural light, and you can do it at home. The area where I'm going to do the flat lays is on, are you ready for this? The landing of my stairs. So I kind of went around my house to try to find where the best light is going to be. I usually do it in my living room. Uh, I move my couch out of the way and I have a big, nice big uh, window that lets in beautiful light. But when I was setting up for this, the clouds moved out of the way and it was direct sunlight causing like those um, window pane harsh lines on the floor. So I knew I didn't want to do the photos right there. Um, it actually looked kind of cool. I was thinking about maybe doing a couple of them right there. I'm gonna take you guys along with me on how I kind of style the tools that I use and how I photograph these products. Today, the product that I'm shooting is for Hair Love. I don't know if you can pull them in. That's bright, the glare. This is actually part of the challenge. This, there we go. This product is on a white bottle. And even though this label is nice and um, non-reflective, sometimes it's a challenge to shoot like white products that have like logos on them and stuff and make sure everything's really nice and crisp. Little clear, they come in all these different sizes. When you buy this package, um, I think it's less than $10 for a pack of them. So we buy like three or four packets, packages of them. They come in all different sizes so you can put them underneath from, from the board so that it has a nice little shadow, gives it some dimension, and it just makes paper stuff like lace so much better. Um, already. Also, big surprise, blue dots, right? They're good for everything. Okay, so I'm gonna take you guys through my house. Um, so my living room over here, where I moved my couch out of the way, that's where I thought I was gonna do this. Um, like I was saying before, it got really bright over there, so I couldn't, um, it didn't, wasn't gonna work out very good. Well, here's what we've got going on. So I've got all my props sitting in the windowsill right here. So I've got product, um, there's also this argon oil bottles and flowers. Oh my gosh, these ranunculus. And how cool is this thing? And then I've got our, our replica surfaces. Um, they're 24 inches square. Uh, they're really lightweight and you can get them in different colors and different pattern, like textures. We have this really beautiful kind of like teal, I can't remember what she calls it, sea foam, I think she calls it. Kind of like a marbly texture. And then we have this concrete one. Um, and they come with, well, I think you have to buy them separately. These like little corner pieces, you can set the another board in it to go up. So you have, have them like this ground and then like a background. The first thing I want to talk about is the lighting. Today I'm going to shoot this with natural light by a window. So see when I put this right next to the window, see how there's this like really just super dark area right there. Obviously that's not good, right? I'm gonna pull this away from the window. Usually you can just stand in front of a window and put your hand and you can see where the best light is. And then I've got some good old white foam core and we're gonna make basically like a little light box. Seriously, you guys, you don't need thousands of dollars in equipment and a studio to take pretty pictures. We already have all that and here I am doing this at my house because sometimes it just is the best thing. Here's another big secret, scotch tape. Okay, so here it is without this last final piece. I always like, like just love how bright things look once I add the final piece of foam cork. And I always like to do this all three sides. So I leave the side with where the window light is coming in open. And then I put foam cork all the way around the other three sides. I do have a little bit of a plan of what we're doing today. Actually, we always go into shooting product flat lays with a major plan. What we do is we help people pick apart their company and their brands, and then we help try to figure out what they actually wanna say first and what types of people they wanna to talk to, what types of things people can use their products for, and then we make a list of that stuff and then we create the photos to go along with it. Uh, a couple other tools that we actually keep in our styling kit that I can't really use here because of the limited space that I have um, is we, have, we carry these like big rolling suitcase things and we keep these in them too so we can kneel down on the ground when we're doing flat lace and that's always like really nice but i have carpet so i don't really care when we're talking about props to include in your flat lace my biggest thing and when i'm trying to plan this stuff is making sure that the props are intentional and that they make sense um so this is talking about including hair love in your bridesmaid gift boxes so i just went around my house and i found some cute things. I also bought this wedding ring pen. This is what every bride uses to write their in their cards, right? 
So a pen makes sense because you're writing a card. <laughs> so it seriously like drives me crazy when things don't make sense. So right now I'm just kind of trying to get a little bit of a feel for how things are gonna go. I was like, what else do you include in bridesmaids boxes? And you include jewelry usually. So maybe the jewelry you want them to wear on your wedding day. Um, and then I thought maybe it'd be cute to use the tulips in this. Tulips are always such a fun thing to use in flat lays. They stick up nice and straight and you don't have to like, they don't really matter if they're like open all the way. I was hoping they'd open a little bit more, but sometimes we actually just pull flowers open. I don't like a little bit of that craft paper showing. And then another thing you want to think about when you're doing flat lays, depending on how many objects you have, do you want it to be either really organic and flowing or do you want it to be geometric? And once I kind of get things where I want them, I will start adding in the little styling blocks and everything. Another thing, sometimes I like to add another layer of depth and right now I don't have like a ton of room. I might try this and it might not work, but I kind of like thought the idea of having just showing just like a little corner of the actual box that you would gift this in would make sense. What we want to keep in mind is that whenever you do a flat lay, you want to have one item that is like your hero. It's hard because your eye wants to go to the text on this card. So I'm going to have to play with the arrangement a little bit to make sure that your eye is going to the hair love and not to something else. Maybe I'll have it go a little bit off the side of the corner of the frame so that it's obvious that that's not like the main thing. Or I could even add two containers of hair love because maybe we're giving this to our bridesmaids two months before their wedding and they need 60 day supply. Um, all right, blue dots are especially helpful when you have round things like this that like to roll around. Um, and then the really cool thing about these styling boards is that they are so easy to wipe off and to get blue dots off of them. Um, when you buy blue dots, these are the only ones I have at Walmart. These are the permanent ones. I don't recommend that. You can get temporary ones. They're a lot easier to peel on and off of things. Now, with this guy, watch how much of a difference this makes. Can you see this card laying here? And then um, I'm going to take the big styling block, just putting that straight on the floor and then put the card on the styling block. Yeah, I like it like that. And I already know that I want that to go a little bit off of the corner of the frame. I'm gonna remove one of these reflector things because I need this to come over here more. Pretty sure this isn't gonna work exactly like this. So I'm gonna move, I'm gonna swap this stuff because since I need just the corner of this box to be in the picture, it's gonna cut off too much of the card. The shot come in like that. So you think you have everything like looking good and then you take a picture and it all changes. And a lot of times too, what I'll do is take the first couple shots with my phone just to see how it's looking. Even if I'm not gonna eventually crop it in a square, I'll put my phone into the square format because I do need to think about that. If they're using this for Instagram, I need to think about that and make sure that it's gonna look good on their grid. So far, so good. Um, I actually love how this, here, I'll just take the picture. So this is upside down. Okay, so I love how the foil is photographing a little bit funky on that card. I feel like that helps show that this isn't about the card. Like I'm not a card company showing you this card, right? If I were, I would probably want to shoot that so it's much more legible. The hair love definitely looks like the main part of the shot. I think you're getting the idea that it's a gift, but I'm gonna move a couple things out. I see some tension points here. This necklace needs to come in a little bit more so that you can tell what it is. This hair love bottle needs to rotate a little bit more. The tulips need to come down a little bit more and the pen is too close to that card. Um, so I'm just gonna keep this photo right here and kind of look at all the things I just mentioned, what I wanna fix. That's how that shot's looking right now. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot it with my camera. Obviously you can do all of this with your phone, but what I'm shooting on is a Canon 5D Mark IV and I have a 50 millimeter 1.2 lens this bad boy is like our favorite when we're shooting portraits we love shooting wide open which means the aperture is all the way open um but when you're shooting flat lays like this you don't want to shoot wide open so if you have things that are at different levels whatever you're focusing on will be in focus and everything else won't everything that's on the same plane will be sharp and everything that's on a different plane whether it's closer to the camera or farther away from the camera won't be sharp so we want to make everything nice and sharp. We're not looking for a shallow depth of field. I'm going to start out at 5.6 and I'm going to put my shutter down to 200. I'm going to start there. That's just a safe place to start with my shutter. I always start around 200. I don't want to get any slower than 1 1 25th of a second when I'm hand holding. Take a test shot and see how it looks. 
Um, it's not bad. It looks way darker on my laptop than that screen to me than it does on the actual camera. Um, but anyway, I'm just gonna bump up my ISO a little bit. I was started at 100, I'm gonna go up to 320 and see how that looks. So I obviously don't wanna stand here. I don't wanna block my light. Watch the shadows on that hair love bottle. <laughs> They're getting really dark, everything's getting dark. Normally what I would be doing is shooting it from, I would be standing behind this and leaning over and shooting it from there. But since I don't have room for that, that's okay. I'm gonna shoot it from the side. And most of the time my flat lays actually have my feet and everything in them. Um, they have the edges of the boards, all that stuff. I shoot very safe so that I can go in and crop it however I want, which is shooting flat lays is really different than shooting um, portraits and stuff where we try to get everything right in camera. So the only thing I'm noticing here is there are some crazy shadows happening on top of those hair love bottles. So normally I would probably get a reflector with some silver and shine some light back down in there. I'm gonna just try this a little bit and see if that does the trick. And that actually helped a lot. So let me show you the difference there. So I just added this one more board and kind of angled it down. So see those dark shadows coming on right there? If I put another, some more light and bounce it back down actually into that at an angle, you can really see it on the camera. There's that one. And then there's the next shot. It's just much softer. So a little shadow is fine. Things have shadows. That's how the earth and the sun works. So it's always funny when people are like, oh, I hate the shadow. It's like, well, things have shadows. So I like shadows. Um, sometimes they're just a little bit too much. Make a decision on how you like to see things. I don't know, I feel pretty good about that shot. I would normally shoot a bunch of different um, kind of variations of this. Okay, we get in nice and close. I just go around and take a ton of pictures and make sure I've got every different possible thing before I break it all down. Um, but what I thought about doing was putting a couple little capsules in one of these bowls or something, you know, uh, and I can leave the bottles set up the way they are. I don't think I would want to like put a whole bunch of pills in there. It's good to show people how big they are and that you only need to take two. So um, a lot of times I just try to think about the product and what they might want to talk about. Um, I might want to just take a picture of the pills with the flowers. This ends up taking quite a while. And when you're going to do flat lays like this, definitely give yourself plenty of time to go through all the motions. Business owners do need this lesson because you can't hire a photographer to do everything all the time, and we know that. So even if you do hire a photographer for all your main stuff, it's really an awesome skill to have to know how to do pictures of your own products, your creative process, your people, and all that stuff um, in between those professional photo shoots. All right, thank you all so much. Have an awesome rest of your day.